Okay, everyone, welcome to the Going Within uh, podcast. Uh, I have my good friend here with me today. Ian, would you like to uh, <laughs> would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Well, yeah, not a problem. Thanks for having us um, on your channel to have a little bit of a discussion. Um, as you said, my name's Ian. Um, and uh, I don't even know or remember how we kind of, oh, I think we connected via Instagram, didn't we? I saw one yeah. of your posts on there. Um, and that's yeah. how, yeah, that's kind of like how we connected. And I just felt there was like, there was something there. There was something a little bit deeper um, between us. And uh, yeah, we've just kind of like built a really nice kind of like no pressure friendship up, you know, we just get in touch when we feel that we need to get in touch. And yeah, so, but a little bit about me, what do I do? So I'm I'm now like a Reiki master uh, teacher or a Reiki teacher, Reiki practitioner. Um, I try not to flower it up too much because it just adds ego to it, you know. But yeah, just a Reiki teacher, Reiki practitioner. Um, I'm also I also teach meditation. I coach meditation for people that need to learn how to meditate. Um, I also now do hypnotherapy or hypnosis. I've done hypnosis training. Uh, so there's various. With, with any form of healing, really, the only thing that holds you back is your own imagination. So you, you can really go wherever you want with it. Um, and obviously, I also have a YouTube channel, which you're aware of, uh, which I talk a lot about, um, about healing, about the mainstream world, about the spiritual awakening that's taking place on the planet. Um, you've been on there. We've talked about star seeds and we've gone quite deep with that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, so it really is kind of like a mixed bag. Um, but the channel is called um, Ian Robinson Reiki Zen. And I did initially call it Reiki Zen, but many people found it unsearchable because there's so much on YouTube about Reiki and about Zen that when you look for my channel, it's just like, well, where is it? It's nowhere to be seen. Yeah. <laughs> so in the end, I decided to call it Ian Robinson Reiki Zen. So it, it narrows it down a little bit. Plus it also, I've recently found as well that it ties in well with, if you search for Reiki in Darlington or Reiki Healing or Reiki YouTube um, or Reiki Zen Healing, a lot of my stuff now comes up as well um so that's that's been really good um so that kind of like that's how that went um and yeah that's kind of like me in a nutshell really as, as as where i am currently i do also work as well um in in the mainstream world um in a, in a part-time job um but that just keeps me kind of like i suppose it keeps me grounded a little bit yeah. as well it keeps me in in the in the normal realm of things i suppose um and yeah, I live with my partner. Uh, we have two dogs, and I like going outdoors, I like walking in nature. I like all like the holistic stuff, really, a lot of holistic stuff. Um, and trying to look for uh, natural ways to be able to help ourselves. Oh, that's cool. Thank you for that description of yourself. That was brilliant. Um, yes, you mentioned, I wanted to mention this straight away as soon as you mentioned it yourself. You said that um, you also work in sort of in the other world as well. We call different worlds, don't we? The, the Reiki world and then the real world. What's, mm. what's that like? I mean, you're, you're putting people through meditations, you're doing Reiki for people, and then you sort of have to go to the other world. <laughs> what's that sort of like for you? Is it easy to transition or is it a bit... Oh, it's weird. Bit, yeah. Weird. I, it is, I, I don't feel, um, I think because of a lot of healing that I've done personally and where I am currently, I don't feel like kind of connected to it anymore. Like it, it feels weird. Um, and, and you start to kind of like see through a lot of, um, a lot of illusions of the mainstream world, you know, a lot of like figures and targets and mm -hmm. sales and all this sort of stuff. Whereas for me, it's kind of like, it's kind of like irrelevant really. <laughs> because it's that's how but that's how the 3d world kind of exists yeah. um within that cage structure um and then when you kind of like step out of that you you kind of see it for what it is and it serves its purpose and it does its role for the people that are that are within it um but yeah you, you it makes me i suppose the way i'm describing it it makes me sound like like i'm the all-seeing all-knowing oracle i am not you know i'm just another <laughs> guy that just I'm just a little bit more aware than some people are. Yeah. And, and that's it. I can actually imagine you actually working and someone coming up to you asking a question and you start just looking at them like, 
wow. <laughs> what? I mean, no judgment at all, but yeah, yeah. It, it feels when you do so much meditating and you you sort of vibrate higher and you you know you're eating good foods and you're feeling good, and then someone comes to you with you know a, a lower vibration. I must admit, it's sort of you can tell. You, you know mm. what I mean? You can tell the difference. Yeah, yeah. and it, it must be kind of odd for you to sort of go from one world to the other. So I thought that was a really yeah. interesting question. It can be um, quite draining on, on, on your energy at times. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that's why recently I have changed jobs because the job that I was at, um, it was where it's where I originally worked like years and years ago. And it seems to have like gone like full circle, but I'm guessing there was some level of learning that needed to happen there. And there was like a breakaway that I need to do, which I've done twice now. I don't know what other lessons I need to learn. I really don't. But maybe, <laughs> maybe maybe there's something else that I, I just I'm just not getting at the minute. Um, but yeah, it just wasn't. Every day was just like oh, it was just like walking through mud. Every day just became so heavy, and you can feel that in your own, not just physically, but every part of you can just feel it. And when you get that sort of like, oh, here we go, another day, you know, and you're just going through the motions. You just know, I need to get out of this. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think for me, I, I asked a question to Spirit last year, and I said, um, "How come I'm still clinging on to sort of the three D world? Why, when I'm doing so much inner work, why?" And the answer I got was really, it just made sense straight away. It was like all the downloads and all the learning that you're processing, going through right now, the, the sort of the humans on, in the three D need that knowledge, they need that wisdom, they need that, you know, because mm. otherwise they don't know any different. Yeah. And I thought that just made so much sense, like all the meditation, all the downloads, all the mad dreams I'm having. OK, maybe it's my turn now to give back and to go to different humans, you know, and and say what's what. Even if they don't want to listen you know, further down the line, a year or two down the line, they might a light bulb might go off on the head. And wow. Do you remember when that guy said that to me? And it all makes sense now. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that was what I got last year when I asked. Mm. I think we've all had that. We've all had those sort of eureka moments. I mean, even when like kind of I started using meditation, discovered meditation, I I would be probably the least likely person to do that sort of stuff because of where I was. The 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 avatar and the person that I created at that time was all about um going out, drinking, smoking, thinking that that was kind of like making me um better but it was just it was making me worse um and then it was only through really i know we've talked about this before but it was only through really through mental health issues and whatever that i was just like uh someone synchronicity came into my life and and asked me if i had tried meditating and that was it it was just like ping it was just like a light bulb moment something just switched on and my whole um perception of of life of who i was of where i was the things i need to do uh what i need to accomplish what i need to change it all just kind of like started to make sense but it was it, it, when you start getting that information it can feel quite overwhelming because you think oh my god i have so much to do i have so much to achieve um and because we live in the constraints of 3d reality and time and all that sort of stuff we think, oh God, it's going to take, it's going to take this long. It's going to take that long. Mm-hmm. But when you become more at peace with yourself, it just, it happens when it meant, when it's meant to happen. You just yeah. let it happen. You just perfect let it go. Perfect timing. Yeah. Yeah. Everything happens in perfect timing, a hundred percent. Yeah. So you mentioned then about drinking and, um, you know, smoking. Did you say smoking as well? Mm. Yeah. Was, do you think that was you trying to fit in or do you, do you think you were oh, yeah. lost? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, hundred yeah. percent. I mean, even when I was going out, I re- I really wasn't bothered about being there. Um, it just felt like something you had to do. Um, mm-hmm. and and the other people that were smoking around me, it just felt like you always felt like the odd one out because you weren't yeah. and they were. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so yeah, so I I just kind of started. I didn't think I would ever become addicted. It was just like when I went out. And then, yes, yeah, sort of like what 10, 12 years later, and I was just like, <laughs> so, smoke. I had to buy like twenty on a morning and twenty on a night because I was just smoking wow. that much, wow, um, okay. and it was just like it was becoming, again, like physically, my physical health, my mental health, um, it was all becoming affected by these other kind of addictions that were going yeah. on internally. So, 
what was there a point where something happened or did you just wake up one day and think that's enough and no more drinking, no more smoking? Or was it more progressive that you sort of stopped that side of your life? Yeah, it was progressive, really. Um, I mean, I still have a drink every now and again, but I think probably I think like what you guys said in your video that I watched yesterday, um, it might be about maybe three times in the year i might have a drink but usually if i have a drink that's me done i'm just like <laughs> just can't yeah. can't do anymore i can't function no um, but it was it was definitely progressive it was to be honest with you for me it was more it was kind of like the financial thing um right. it was it was a real real struggle to be able to like just afford it i'm just thinking well, why am i doing this why am i actually just basically rolling up a tenner and burning it basically that's what you're doing mm -hmm. um and so that was that was it you know and it was it was it was really tough um back in back in the early years of of like kind of like trying to get to grips with who i was and my mental health and i mean there was times where i'd, I'd go in the kitchen and like my meals that i would have every day would be porridge because that's all i could afford wow. i would just have a bag of porridge in the cupboard and that was it wow um so uh, but that's kind of like that's just how you get on that's just how you survive yeah. um whereas now i just, just like the cupboards are always full you know it's totally yeah. totally different you know but yeah. yeah but that but that was it and it's 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 funny how um resilient you do become and how strong you, you do become because of all the the stuff you have to go through basically yeah wow ian that's really inspiring i mean thank you for sharing that i mean i love stories like that that's mm -hmm. literally you in survival mode it's you at the yeah. bottom and you know you're fighting your way back up and i just thank you for sharing that because that's really really touching for me you know, i've got goosebumps actually when you said about the porridge me I was too like, wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> i was yeah. like wow that's amazing like incredible the, the way you've turned your life around as well so to after that moment when was it you got into all the Reiki and the other side of your life? Did I know you say it was progressive. What was the spark that made you say, right, I'm going to do um, Reiki. I'm going to do meditations for people. <clears throat> it was really the, the, like I said, the meditation really opened me up to kind of who I was, where I was. It gave me a lot of clarity of mind. It made me realize the, the place that I was at, the, the working environment, the people that I was around we're really having kind of quite a a, a negative um sort of vibration on on me and it was, it was affecting me vibrationally energetically and obviously, obviously energy is everything so it affects you physically it affects you on every single level um and so when i stepped away from that i got a new job i went somewhere else the, the vibration was different it was a bit more of a positive environment and and then i discovered like some i was I think it was one night and I was working in this coffee shop and um, we were just like cleaning up, ready to close the shop on a night time. And I noticed these leaflets on like the, the fireplace in this coffee shop and it was about Reiki. And I was like, oh, what's that? So, and I, I knew the word key because I knew it related to like kind of energy, um, but I didn't know what the ray was. Um, so kind of like looked into it and then the the guy that was actually on the leaflets i noticed he started coming into the coffee shop and he was pretty much in there nearly every day um so after a few shifts i always like went over we had a bit of a natter and chatted about it and it, it said he said well why don't you just come along and just give it a go because your first session with me is free um and then if you want to try more then you just pay after that so i went along and, and had my first session and i was just like Oh, I was just like everything. I just felt so light. I was like, "What is that? There's something. There's something in this." And I yeah. knew um, that there was something in it. Um, and I was seeing like loads and loads of colors and and things like that. And because my clairvoyance was obviously becoming more activated, um, and and it just became it just became a part and parcel thing. And then I found out that he actually taught it as well, so you were able to learn. I was like, well, how do you learn this? You know, this is like kind of mystical and, and weird and something that I would never ever think of of going down. But if it's making me feel this good, it's going to make other people feel this good too. Uh, and that was, that was kind of like it for me. I was just like, I need to learn this. I need to make this kind of like my journey, my life, my calling to be able to just help people and, and help them heal themselves and 
see how much um, this energy can help to to change their lives. And then yeah. that just opened doorways for <clears throat> teaching the meditation, learning hypnosis. And, and, you know, all my therapies are just continuing to grow. I just want to add and add and add to it all the time. Oh, that's awesome. I love that, that you're giving back as well. There's nothing greater, in my opinion, than sort of feeling really good and then thinking, how can I sort of push this onto other people? Not push them, but, but how can I help other people to feel the way that I'm feeling right now i feel the top of the world i want to help humans because i don't know about where you live but the, god there's so many people around me and i think you just look miserable mm. you look so sad and you look yeah. depressed and what can i do to help you unfortunately they're not at the time and place in their life where they can accept the help which mm. is even harder yeah. but um yeah it, it's it's cool how you wanted to give back i love that Mm. Um, so we're going to speak about now something quite interesting and I'll tell a funny story before we get into it um, last year I think I brought up in a I don't know if you recorded it or it was just a general chat you know between friends seeing how we're catching up and uh, I think I brought up your partner and I think I might have said she or something like that and I thought mm. nothing of it because looking at you and getting to know <laughs> you you know I didn't think anything of it and then I remember 10 minutes after the chat had ended, you messaged me and said, um, oh, just to let you know, I, I'm, I'm actually gay. And I looked at my phone for ages. And I was like, there's no way. There's no way. <laughs> and I thought... It's pulling oh. my leg. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the poor soul was, was, didn't want to say anything then. He didn't want to tell me. And, and I hope he doesn't feel like any different now. I remember sending you a message straight away. I said, it absolutely changes nothing here. And they're still mm. really close friends. Mm. Right over my head. Doesn't even matter. Yeah. But I just thought it was a funny story we can sort of add into this. Um. So how do I start with this one? It's interesting. Because there's a lot of people in self-denial, for one. There's a lot of people who don't want to be sort of gay or, you know, whatever the terms. I have to be very careful what I say nowadays because mm. we're all brushed under he, she. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, them and all that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, if, <laughs> if you go on Stims now, they have a, a, a them. Yeah. Or, yeah, so I have to be very careful. But um, were you always sort of knowing that you probably was gay? Or was it more of a... Whoa, I'm of a shocker when you got older, if you don't mind me asking you. Um, I probably always knew. I think deep down I always knew. And I, I've i always known that I've been different because, like, when I was, like, three years old, I, I, I asked my mum, like, oh, what happens to us when we die? I mean, how many kids ask the mum that? You know, it's just, like, <laughs> weird. So, so, so she probably got a bit of a shock <laughs> when I said that like she's just like mothering me you know I'm just sat, sat on a knee and because and I remember it so clear like oh what happens to us when we die and she's probably thinking what 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 is this kid <laughs> so I, I know I know that I've always been like a little bit um different and a little bit unusual um but then like coming to terms with with who I, who I am um and I, and I think a lot of that was caused the mental health stuff as well because I wasn't right. willing to kind of accept really you know I was trying to just conform to what everybody else was doing and whatever you know and, and again it's just like kind of following the crowd following the herd um with the drinking the smoking and just you know that was just part of life and mm -hmm. and it, it's you know uh, going back to the mental health the way I felt with the mental health I thought everyone else felt the same so I didn't even know that I had an issue um, until I saw something on social media. But yeah, I mean, deep down, I think I've always known. I've always kind of like had them feelings, but just kind of, yeah, just kind of like suppressed them for a long time. And that did yeah. more damage, I think, than, than anything. Yeah, you sort of went into my next question there about the whole drinking and the smoking. Do you, like you said, that's probably tied to it mm. um, and possibly like, you know, not really accepting yourself for who you mm. are and not accepting, you know, the sort of things that you want to do in life. Um, so where did it sort of come? And you, you sort of said, right, did, was it all at once then to sort of say, right, I'm going to change my life. I'm going to accept who I am. And I'm going to just, you know, be myself, love myself and just tell people I am Ian and this is me. Yeah, I mean, I've never been one of these kind of like, you know, these, well, you can probably guess, but, you know, these like, 
the, the ones that stand at the top of a hilltop singing, I am who I am and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'll never be one of them, you know, but, and I don't really kind of like make an announcement of it. I just think, you know, I am who I am and it is what it is, you know, and, and that's it. Um, but there was a point where I started like um, dating someone and it, and it got quite serious and I just thought, I'm going to have to like, like come out now and just say, you know, so, but when I did that, um, cause there was a lot of fear behind that as well, because obviously back in, like for me, back in the eighties, it was always, again, it was stigmatized, but, um, and then, you know, people before that, you know, it's, it's just the horrors of what people have gone through. Um, but, um, yeah, I was still, again, totally accepted for who I was. Um, and, and the weight, the relief that I felt internally, the, I mean, I just couldn't stop crying. It just all came out, blah, 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 the whole lot. Um, so that all that stuff that I'd held in all that time. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so I mean, I told my mom first, and then she kind of like let other, my brother and my dad know. And, you know, they got in touch and just said, you know, you are who you are. We still love you. We're always here for you. Don't worry about it kind of thing, you know. So I'm That's just great. Like, Oh wow, you know, because you do hear of these people that just kind of they get, you know, the whole the family just doesn't want to know. They just yeah. push them out, you know. So yeah, and then it's, it's and then I suppose a lot of the healing work as well that I have been doing has has been more about um self acceptance, about who I am, um, about life, about the directions I want to take. I've always been conscious of myself about my appearance I always used to be quite overweight as a child so so that was always like a thing for me so my weight's always been an issue whereas now I'm just I'm just like you know what I'm really not that bothered you know if I'm fat I'm fat if I'm thin I'm thin it re it, it really doesn't because again it's just it's not who we really are it's just the avatar that we're, that yeah. we're carrying around you know internally there is so much more we have yeah. this in, e eternal force within us that is who we actually are and it's yeah. that that we're working with it's that element that we're that we're doing the healing with yeah we're definitely on a self-love journey i mean i i definitely am i know you are and then there's probably everybody's on a self-love journey um but it just makes you feel so much better actually appreciating and accepting yourself for who you are yeah i was very much like you trying to fit in with the crowd and i never liked drinking i've never ever enjoyed a beer that's a true story about me i've never enjoyed one beer in my life it's always been sort of cocktails and girly drinks you know what I mean? <laughs> every time i go to the bar i'm like um oh, i don't really know what to drink i mean i had vodka for a while vodka and red bull yeah and then i remember going to i was in the pub with my friends and they all ordered beer and i went to the bar and said um um can i get a wicked you know wkd yeah yeah <laughs> and the lad turned around and went what are you doing yeah, I, thought you were you know, say, I thought you were going to say, can I have a sex on the beach or something like that? <laughs> I've ordered a couple of them as well. <laughs> but this particularly one time, it was um, Wicked's. Right. And I was like, why, what's wrong with Wicked's? And I realised that, oh, I'm definitely not in with the normal, you know, 18-year-old mm. lads who's coming in the pub and getting a pint. And <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a, a self-love journey this life, 100%. Mm. But um, obviously with me, I, I've worked on myself a lot. That 2020 was the year I sort of looked myself in the mirror and said, right, I'm going to make a change. Um, and ever since that moment, really, it's been a constant battle of, come on, love yourself. Why don't you love yourself? And what's wrong with me and all this? And, and I finally got to a point probably last year and I was just in my car and I just started dancing. Well, it sounds a bit odd. I was just driving along and this song came on and I was just like, I'd be having a good time. I thought, <laughs> this is what it's like to just sort of be in the moment and appreciate and accept exactly who you are. And I, I just, mm. I felt really happy. I felt like I wanted everyone to be dancing in the cars and joining in with me. I know mm. it sounds a bit odd. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that was the sort of point for me where I thought, wow, like this is it. This is the moment now. And probably ever since that moment, you know, I have my off days or off moments, like an hour I feel off or whatever, but the majority of it is really positive. And um, I've noticed as well, going for anything that you feel is exciting in life and you're mm. passionate about and yeah. you go for it a hundred miles per hour, mm. that makes you feel really good about yourself as well. It's like you've, you've nowhere to sort of think negatively 
yeah. or I'm not good enough or I'm not doing enough. If you're constantly chasing your passion, life's just constantly fun. So I don't know yeah, yeah. how you feel about that. I mean, obviously with you, you more than me, because you're doing your career that you want to do, you know, right now, I'd say, is that mm. correct? Or is there yeah, anything else yeah. you want to do? Um, I just want to, I just want to continue with it. And, and I just feel I follow where I'm kind of intuitively guided to, you know, whatever, whatever I feel pulled to. Um, and, you know, I mean, just last year I did like the, the hypnosis training and that was something that I, I felt guided to do for quite some time, but I, I held it off and I held it off. And then a couple of uh, friends of mine who were, who were like psychic as well. And, and they'd said, um, when you're going to do your hypnosis training, I'm being told to tell you to get your hypnosis training done. I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm just like, yeah. kind of like hanging fire, you know? And they're like, well, what for? Like, well, yeah. What am I holding back for? So I just went, I just did it. Um, and it was really, really good. It kind of like, it just opened my mind to um, even more, even more possibilities. Like I said, the only thing that holds people back is their, probably the self-belief and their imagination. Yeah. That is the only thing that stops people. Um, yeah. If, if, you really, if you really want to do something, you, you can do whatever you want to do. Yeah. Um, it's just 100%. get that into gear oomph, and then follow it, you know, and just yeah. go with it. I was the exact same. Again, I, I said to <clears throat> my partner and everybody, I'm going to do a um, podcast and start filming in the gym next year. And then no one said anything to me. It was actually myself. And I was like, hang on, why have I limited myself to next year? That's mm. wasting six months doing nothing. Mm. What am I waiting for? Why yeah. 2024? Why? And it actually plan, panned out. So it was 2024. It's perfect divine timing. But it's true that, I mean, I look back now and I think, why? Why didn't you just do it on the day? Because yeah. even if it fails, so what? Yeah. So yeah, what? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't. Does it really matter? Like, if you make a fool of yourself, what? How can you make a fool of yourself? You've mm. actually tried something that you was passionate about. It yeah. didn't work out. It, that in itself is is you know quite. I, I don't think that's a bad thing. Well, I think all failure is a success at the end of the day. Because yeah. you've gained something out of it. You've actually gained, you've learned something. You're like, oh, well, that hasn't worked. Let's try something else. Yeah. Um, you know, and a, a lot of people will just look at failure as failure, you know, but it isn't. You know, there is so oh. much more to it. There is so yeah. many lessons to be had through failure. And that's the only way that we learn in life is through failure. If we yeah. get everything right all the time, then how are we ever going to gain knowledge, gain wisdom? How are we ever going to feed our our spirit? Because, um, you know, everything is. It's it's a bit like you know they always talk about why we why we re reincarnate and come back to Earth. You know, you know why have I come back here? Why have I come back to this life? But you know, Earth is the school. Earth is yeah. one of the hardest places to be <clears throat> um, for yeah. for you to live um, mm -hmm. and for your soul to learn. You know, and mm -hmm. if if you're constantly in spirit and you're just floating around and everything's just rosy where's the where's the healing work going on there where where's the yeah. the knowledge that you're gaining it's just you need to come here and you need to experience it and go through it all yeah 100 percent. i mean yeah earth is definitely a school and you can grow so much on earth I, mm. i've noticed you can i feel like almost you can grow in one day more than like lifetimes or so many different years on other planets because as a human being, you go through so many different emotions. Mm -hmm. You could wake up excited by 11 o'clock. You could be sad by one o'clock. You could be excited at three o'clock. You could be nervous, anxious. Mm -hmm. You There's so many times, especially last year, where I like to sort of get to nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. And then I think to myself, right, what have I learned today? How have I felt today? How can I process how I felt? And there's so many times last year, I sort of was thankful. I said, Wow, I've I've felt every emotion today. Anger, sad, happy, excited, nervous. Mm. And instead of getting upset about it, I was like, this is really positive. Like I feel great because mm. without feeling anxious, I don't feel the exciting feeling. Without feeling upset, I don't realize how beautiful life is when I feel happy. Mm. So that was massive. Um, I mean, this year is only what 17 days old, so I'm sort of just kind of excited all the time at the moment this year. But last year was a massive uh, learning curve for me so what was your like what was your uh, year like last year and going into this year 2024 I, I just have a great feeling about this year I feel like something big's going to happen um 
like it's we're going to sort of get clarity of other beings. I don't know. I've just got this inkling that this year is massive. So going into this year, what's your goals? What's your inspirations to to really, you know, at the end of 2024, say, wow, look what I've achieved. Mm. This year, I'd really like to have my own kind of, although like, yeah, I do my distance healing from this room, but this is like a bedroom. Um, I would really, really like to have my, my own dedicated space. Um, even though like I do hire a space and I use that and it's nice and everything, but I just, it is quite sterile. So I like to put like my own touch on it, you know, and bring my own things. And I mean, look at this place. It's like, there's just a cacophony of color, you know, I just, if I can bring that in some way, you know, and just like, just bring that energy into it. So I'd like to achieve that. I'd like to do that again. I want to, I want to do more, um, therapies. I want to, I'm thinking about learning like a massage, another form of massage this year. So maybe like Swedish massage or something like that. Oh yeah. Um, just because it's nice to, learn the physical stuff as well as the energetic stuff because not yeah. everybody gets the energy even though everything is energy not everybody gets it mm -hmm. but the massage again is a manipulation of energy through the physical so it's nice to do that as well um so that's something else that i want to do this year as well um and if if i get them if i don't get them you know it is what it is whatever happens happens but it would be nice to get that to get some get some like more forward movement it'd be nice to actually just say you know what actually i don't need to work anymore i can actually just focus on the business i've got enough income coming in every month now just keep me ticking over um and you know i'm just like i've got to a point now where you know as long as the main bills are covered that's it i'm not bothered you know i just i just want to follow the the calling follow the dream follow the passion and, and get there you know but I, I do feel that like what you say 2024 i mean I, I did a reading on my channel about it but i think there's going to be a, a lot of um a lot of positive energy um yeah. a lot of definitely a lot of change and a lot of people coming into themselves a lot more um yeah. a lot more healing i also got for some reason i got the feeling that something's good something like you talked about like beings but i just think something's going to be discovered something sort of mm -hmm. kind of like mysterious so whether it's going to be like sort of an ancient sculpture i think they've actually already found something ancient somewhere but i think something like that's going to happen some sort of ancient mystical thing is going to be uncovered somewhere as well i don't know why i felt that but yeah but the more we go through this stuff and the more the world and the 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 collective awakens this stuff naturally unfolds anyway it has to yeah um so yeah yeah, I think uh, the more people vibrate higher, mm. I think I, I think everyone's sort of waiting in, and looking to the sky for the UFOs. <laughs> but I think, funnily enough, I think they're actually already here. Mm. And I think when our vibration rises, we will just sort of like in the blink of an eye, sort of like, oh, my God, wow, there's like a different being. And it'll be right in front of our eyes. And I think mm. it'll just be a bit of a shocker, but so yeah, yeah. cool at the same time. Um, but yeah, I've just got this feeling this year that it's it's a really significant year and I'm really excited for it. I, I think especially those who's tapped into higher frequencies, they can sort of psychically and, and, and maybe even get messages from the higher selves and stuff that, wow, something big is around the corner. Mm. And last year, I didn't really feel like there was a connection with other beings available. It was more introspective and understanding myself and you know, it was an exciting year, really enjoyed last year, but this year I've just got a really exciting, positive feeling that something around the corner. Mm. I don't know if you've seen the Miami video. Have you seen anything to do with yeah. that? It's um, in America. I I'm not commenting on it because it's so split right now. There's people saying it was fake. There's people saying it was uh, legit and it was uh, a portal and people didn't realise that, you know, it was going to happen. But uh, in, Mia in Miami... I think it's Miami. There was a, a portal opened, and apparently, three shadow beings. All you could see was shadow mm. um, come through the portal. And there was police called. I think they said there was. Oh, I don't want to get it wrong now. It was either sixteen or something ridiculous, like sixty police cars turned up at the scene because of the sheer panic that right. these beings had come through. Um, Interesting. I, yeah, I thought you might have, have sort of heard oh, about it. I have seen it. that. 
No. But it's it's funny you should mention that because um, do you remember? I think you'd sent me a video last year of that woman seeing something on yeah. a plane. Yeah. And that and you, there was a few other videos that came up after that. And of people seeing something on a plane, and and usually you get all the troll messages like, "Oh, she's on something" or whatever, you know. But and it's funny you should talk about this kind of like when you're in a right frequency, you will see something. And I was, um, I do a podcast with my other friend Patrick, and and I was like, kind of like talking and channeling and tuning into this energy of like when we are on a certain frequency you won't be seen by people that aren't on the same um, in that reality. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and that is like similar to what you're saying about, because they're in such a high frequency that currently we're not able to see them, but you know, yeah. I, I, they've always been here. I think they've always been here. And it's, it's just like, it, it will, it will come out in, in the wash eventually, but um, whether they're here to save us, I don't think so. I think a lot of it is, um, you know, religiously, people talk about like the return of Christ and all that sort of stuff. Whereas, you know, my understanding, my belief is just the awakening. It's the awakening yeah. of, the, of the spirit. People are connecting back to the the original energy, you know, source or God, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, and and that that raise in frequency will make you more aware um, and increase your perception and of of things that are going on um, in your vibrational reality. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, Christ, they always say Christ is coming back. I, I literally take it the same way as you do that Christ consciousness is mm. coming back, yeah. which what is Christ consciousness, which basically, you know, the higher, the higher light or the higher, whatever you want to call it, the higher vibration mm. or whatever is just coming back uh, more of a, a peaceful, unconditional, loving sort of um, soul inside. Yeah. And that's yeah, what yeah. the ray yeah. outwards. And then, yeah everybody sort of gets that um funny enough i was watching um i'll tell you a little story over christmas and new year i was dreaming a lot about the hybrid children have you ever heard of them mm. the hybrid kids mm. yeah and i've never never been interested never I've, I've always been like oh cool that could be fascinating like apparently it's the greys and humans mm. mixing dna to create these hybrid kids i thought nothing of it it was just like it's quite interesting but the amount of information and downloads that I was getting in dream time from actually these children. Mm. And it makes me feel like, well, hang on, why am I getting it now? But maybe that's why I got this really positive feeling about this year that maybe something's being pushed to those awakened to mm. sort of say, this is round the corner. And by the time you know it, these beings are going to be all around us. Mm. So have you, what have you heard about these hybrid kids? Because a lot of people bring them up and I've never really paid attention until now. I'm like fascinated with it. Have you yeah, heard? Of it's, I mean, there's, there's various things that you can look at about it. Um, a lot of people believe that we are hybrids as we are. Yeah. Um, so that's just been happening, but we are kind of like an experiment of what people, that's what some people talk about. Um, other people talk about these, um, like this, like I say, these hybrid children that are coming in that are like sort of uh, genetically modified between um, different races and what have you. Um, I really don't know <laughs> for for sure what it is, um, but there must be something in there for for it to be out there. Um, and I think a lot of people are, are the same. You know, when when you start sort of like waking up a little bit and seeing things, you, you go, you kind of like dive into conspiracy theories and, and you look a lot, a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, and I've always said, regardless of how ridiculous the theory is, there's going to be an element of truth in it somewhere. There will be a nugget because where's it started from? It can't just yeah. out of nothing. Um, but it's usually um, perception and ego that changes it and transforms it into something so ridiculous that it's just like yeah. you know and, and it makes a lot of people makes people like you and me like just like fall into <laughs> their into their like no <laughs> that's, yeah. that's not what we that's not who we are um <laughs> but you do kind of start off like that don't you really and you, you do a lot of i think you do a lot of finger pointing and you do a lot of blaming other people and then you stop doing that and then you move into another dimension of um consciousness of 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 learning more about maybe about yourself and about 
the various frequencies within and you want you to uh, sort of emanate that out to other people to help to help the raising of, of the vibration of the planet so but yeah i mean i really don't know um what they are who they are but there is there's obviously stuff out there um and whether we will ever know is just like again it's again it's it's a level of kind of perception and speculation um so but it is interesting it's interesting that you got the downloads as well and the information about it um <clears throat> but yeah i try i try to look at everything with try kind of like now much more balanced approach rather than just falling into that pack or that pack and because i think a lot of stuff as well is is geared and aimed to create more, more division within people yeah um, so you know and you know the spirit the spiritual community now is just like so split so divided and and like a couple of years ago i was like connected to quite a lot of people um in in the community and we, we made collaborations we did videos we did this we did that whereas now we just everyone feels like they just kind of like step back they've gone mm-hmm. in they've i think 2023 was a lot like going into hermit mode doing a lot of that introspection and integration and a lot of healing work um but yeah i think moving into this year i think there is going to be a lot more of this stuff coming out more people being aware of it yeah Um, i think you're right and i think it's so important to be open-minded there's so many people who you know will ask me a question and i'll answer it and then i feel like they're almost doubting me before i've even mm, answered yeah 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 Yeah. and i think so important to be open-minded who's to say that there's not other beings out there who's to Mm. say that there's not this that that it could be anything we're really we've gone through the um amnesia process on earth for a purpose yeah. for a big reason to yeah. forget everything um so i think being open-minded is so important mm-hmm. um i think you get forced to especially when you're in a spiritual sort of life and mindset there'll be yeah. things that pop up and you think no no that's yeah. no way happening to me right now but it really is mm-hmm. um i thought well we're on to this topic now we're getting into it it's quite um, exciting and quite interesting to speak about probably star seeds like mm. why let's let's uh, sort of um, touch that topic um do you know where you had other incarnations or are you keeping oh, that yeah yeah are you yeah. keeping it do you not want people to know or because some people I don't, don't. No, I, I, I really don't i really don't mind i mean i, mm. I have had a couple of akashic readings before where um some of those the information's come through on those um uh, but yeah, I mean, it's when when I went for my Akashic reading, like the, the actual woman that does them, she said, well, I hope you got an open mind. And I was just like, yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> and then she started like telling me all this stuff. I'm just like, what the fuck? She, I don't know. Like, and I was just like, well, I thought I had an open mind and it's sort of like, just, it's like, it just opens you up to like another level um but yeah she started telling me all this stuff but then like towards the end of the reading um it all started to like sort of like make sense as to why i'm here and who i am and and the lifetimes that where you've held on to this or you've held on to that and you need to work on this you need to work on that and so much energetic information that came through i'm just like wow this is like um this is like pretty, pretty intense stuff, but it was really interesting. Um, and and I, f- well, she did say that my uh, spirit originally incarnated in, in like a totally different galaxy somewhere somewhere else. She didn't say which one, um, but she said you did come to our solar system and um, eventually. Um, and I think it was uh, was it Marduk or something like or Mardek or something like that it's called uh, yeah Maldek Maldek that was it yeah um and she said you, you did go to Maldek and you were in a colony, colony there but then there was an galactic war the planet blew up and you had yeah. to come to earth um and when I first came to earth I worked with I was like a professor or a scientist in that life um and I worked with vibration and sound so I was aware of how sound and vibration could move things and manipulate the reality 
um, but she said obviously over time a lot of that information not a lot of that knowledge has been taken away um, because consciousness gets to a certain level and it has to be like kind of like suppressed and you start all over again and that's why we see so much of this recurring theme on the earth where there's been so many different civilizations and they get to a certain point and it's just like right that's enough of that you know <laughs> we need to stop that now cover that up yeah. and then they start all over again um but yeah but i mean syrian lyrian uh atlantis uh lemuria all these different uh tataria all these different places and civilizations is is where i've been like kind of on uh, on and around our our uh, galaxy, I suppose. Yeah. That's uh, cool how you, you mentioned them. Is that's basically pretty much the exact same as me. Mm. Uh, but I've been to other places as well. Um, when I got a reading, the, the lady was like, um, basically, I'm a traveller and I've travelled to all different um, different places. Maybe not incarnated there, but I've travelled there. So I've got a lot of their energy. And um, that's so true because when, when I went through the awakening, I, a lot of people can sort of relate to this is your first thing you do is um where, where am i from so you type in don't you uh, andromedan starseed actuarian starseed and you start like listening to um or seven um seven sort of signs that you're from this star system so you listen mm. and i'm not joking every single one i was like yep yeah, that just sounds like me yep yeah, mm. that sounds like me and i couldn't understand it was so frustrating i was like how can every single one of <laughs> bar one or two mm. sound like me like that's describing me to a t yeah. and then for to get that clarification it just shows you that you know from someone who you don't know is telling you this outside information there must be something in it mm. um last year i had a great akashic reading um and she basically said that obviously um about my dad and everything in lyra and then so many months later um it actually happened in, in real life when mm -hmm. my dad got um you know cancer and, and everything like that and it was like sort of setting me up three or four months before it was happening to say you have struggled with this in a past in a multi-dimensional version of your life mm -hmm. and you're going to go through it again now to learn yeah. and to process it better than what you did last time mm -hmm. and uh, I think that's so fascinating I just wanted to sort of touch on the starseed topic because I just find it fascinating and I know uh, talking to you about it's pretty cool as well um so starseed for people who don't know is, is basically if you think you're in like a human body right now and your soul is in your human body you, that is exactly what you are a soul so basically when we say starseeds i just want to describe this for anybody who's watching this and thinking starseeds what the fuck? what's this mm. um it's basically your soul has been elsewhere in many different planets many different even universes you've been everywhere um, because when you're when you die, your physical body stays here. Your soul goes back to the to the real. I call it the real life. I call this mm. the dream life. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so I say like when we die in this life, we wake up. Mm. I don't know if uh, if other people see it that way, but that's what I believe personally that we're sort of dreaming in this reality mm. to learn and to grow, and because it's so hard for our massive souls to be stuck in such a tiny physical. Yeah. Yeah. body do you know what yeah. i mean yeah yeah because um, there's the other there's the other side of it as well where we talk about soul fragmentation you know where there's there's elements of you existing all over the universe um and also like what what we have to remind ourselves as well is that our actual physical body even though yeah we we it, it wastes away and it dies we are also the physical is also a part of the universe so everything that makes up the physical is is atoms it's energy as well so you know and and we actually choose that body to reincarnate in because there's a level of learning so you know yeah. <clears throat> from from my i suppose um lack of self-acceptance when i was younger you know that there was that something that within my spirit that i had to had to heal and that's why i've chosen this body this avatar um to go through the healing process and that's for every come on, it's, it's like vast when you think about it that's for every single person that goes through exactly the same thing the, the, the one thing in life that you can guarantee is you will physically die but energetically you will always move on into yeah. another into another incarnation another, another dimension of of life which i think is really comforting for anybody like especially those who 
uh, are scared of death. A lot of people now are scared of death. And I think like, probably won't listen to me, but me or you or anybody telling them that, you know, when you die, you don't worry, you're actually going to wake up and you're actually going to be, mm. you know, remember everything and you're going to know who you are exactly. And it's not that big of a deal. Mm. Um, Maybe but, with you, you'll be with your spirit family, you know, like um, I know you've talked about them before, about your guides and your helpers and spirit, you know, I talk about my guides and my, and they're, they're there to help you. They're there to guide you. You go back to your family, your soul family, and you know and and it, and it and something else like um to do with like the akashi you know is is like everyone that you that you meet in this life in this earthly life you've you've connected with on some level in another life and you you bring them all with you because they all have an element of teaching of learning um and and that's what it's all about that's why we come to yeah. earth we come to earth to to learn to heal to, to kind of level up um our our souls, our spirits. Mm -hmm. It's funny you should say that as well. I mean, a lot of people who say like you don't like your mother, or your father, or your best friend turns on you, or your partner, or whatever. Um, I feel like mostly that your enemy is actually your best friend in spirit mm -hmm. and is helping you at a deeper. You know, they love you so much and they love you unconditionally that they're actually prepared to go and hurt you so much to mm -hmm. learn a lesson. I think yeah. that's really important for people to understand because. There's so much hatred on this planet. There's so much division. There's so much, oh, he did this, she did that. And I had to learn that the hard way as well. I mean, I went through a time in my life where I thought my life was over. I, I had um, uh, a wife and I was with uh, my son. It, you know, I went as a family and um, something happened. I won't go into it, but um, that basically I sat down and said, my life's over. I'm completely finished. I'm done. There's no way back to this. Um what, what can I possibly do? And I remember walking just around these fields, that you know, near my house and I got a message saying, um, have faith. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I never would have predicted me to be like this. I was always like yourself, didn't care about the spirit, sort of the spirit. I was always in the 3D trying to impress people and fit in. Mm -hmm. I never would have thought I'd be speaking so openly mm -hmm. about crazy experiences. And a lot of people... I don't think they really buy or they really like it when you talk about these experiences. I've lost mm -hmm. so many friends and so many people want to stop talking to me because this is me now. This is my personality now mm -hmm. of speaking so outwardly and about these bizarre, crazy situations. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I had a moment where it was, um, I wouldn't say it was an outer body experience, but it was sort of like a slap in the face mm. where I got a message so vividly and so clear. It, it, I, I just cried. I just cried my eyes out. I was on the, I basically went against this tree and I was crying my eyes out for 10 minutes. And I just said, it's not over. We can do this. Have faith. Let's go with the advice. And this is why I'm so sort of publicly putting it out there on social media and doing these YouTube videos now, um, because I was basically forced when you, when you think your life's over and you get a higher knowing and a higher love of life, it's a bit like you have you watched Scrooge. Mm, <laughs> it's yeah, a bit yeah. of a bad yeah, comparison. Yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. But he's so down in the dumps, isn't he, all the way through the film. Mm. And on Christmas morning, he wakes up and it's the best day ever. He's yeah. giving he's money out of his window. He's buying everything for everyone. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like that when you hit an awakening, I feel like. Mm. Oh my God, life's not over. Life's beautiful. I've got more to give. I've got more to learn. And I just felt like Scrooge. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't yeah, as yeah. miserable as him, but yeah. you know, it's, it's a perfect sort of. Um... No, well, uh, well, I think that's the. I think that was the whole point of that story. Really, is to make people more aware, you know, of 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 the enjoyment of of life. You know that that you have to go through a lot of this soul searching to actually come on the other side and see that you know it's it's actually it's it's not that bad. And yeah. you can enjoy your life, and you know if if, and I, and I don't think it's like kind of like a way of of forcing you into a way of changing your ways because ultimately we we all have free will. But if you want to um, experience life on a, on a lighter level, then you know just you, sometimes you need to be aware of that stuff um, yeah. to be able to see what it's actually doing to you. Yeah. Um, yeah so. And I think as well, if you're preaching, that sort of comes under the label of being um, in a religion. 
Mm. I, I don't want to slag any religion off whatsoever. No way. I'm very respectful of every every belief system going on earth, whatever you believe in. If that works for you, cool. But I think religion, getting onto that topic now, is very much in a fishbowl. And you are forced to believe this in this mm. fishbowl. And if you come out this fishbowl, you are wrong. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And I don't like to preach to people because I feel as soon as you start preaching, people switch off. Mm. But if you just go to them in a, a very calm manner and say, this this is my belief system, mm. you can believe it or not, it's up to you. I think that sort of resonates more with people. I don't know how you yeah. feel about that yourself. Do you, do you sort of, I wouldn't say preach, but do you tell people about your life experiences uh, on a day-to-day? -day? Not on a day-to-day -day basis, but I do try to give kind of like little nuggets um of information of how people can try and um help themselves um to try and take a little bit of that i suppose that weight off themselves um yeah. and i don't mean like kind of like physical weight but <clears throat> the, the, the emotional and mental and spiritual weight as such yeah. um so yeah i try to i try to um but you i think you usually just feel as well that um those people that you need will gravitate towards you um so the people oh, yeah. that need need that assistance will will move into your um into your life and into your dimension just for that little bit of of of, of knowing yeah um so yeah mm. that's cool that's awesome um yeah so i started doing to the end to the end of the video you've got now. a few um got a few orbs floating about you have a, it's, is, there, uh, is, there, is there a fly in the room or anything like that? <laughs> there could be. When I was um, getting tattooed yesterday, there was a fly that kept landing on me, and I was I kept thinking to myself, I wonder, I wonder if that's some sort of spirit guide. I don't know. I wonder if that's mm -hmm. someone sort of saying, you know, we'll be all right. It's painful, but you'll be fine. Yeah. But it kept landing <laughs> on this side of my chest, so it's just it's just interesting. But yeah, mm. I've done um, a video on my Instagram, and I watched it back. And I was like, geez, how many orbs were around me? It was like three on four just floating around my head. Mm. There was one, well, like, when we started, there was one like on your, I think it's your right, is, put your hand on your right shoulder. Yeah. So there's one there and it sort of like came down from the ceiling and went into like your shoulder. And then oh, wow. on, on your left shoulder, there was one just sort of like went up and, and across. And then behind you before there was, is your, is your family Catholic? Um. Yeah, the the, the class is Catholic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, just because I saw Mother Mary behind you on your behind your left shoulder before when you were talking, yeah. and it was just before you started talking about faith, you know, and the faith thing, and I just saw like a, like a woman figure in like sort of you know the the generic Mother yeah. Mary sort of robes and everything. Do you yeah. want to know something crazy now? You just mentioned that mm. the person who gave me that message was Mother Mary. Oh right. Okay. Well, that'd be about, why about the faith. Right, that'll be that'll be when. Was so when did, Mary. was that just then when she told you, or was it was it back then when it I happened? Know. Right, yeah. okay, that's that'll be, that'll be why that's that's coming <laughs> then. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's just really nice because I said to you like I had that message of faith, but I didn't tell you who ex or what yeah. exactly it was. Yeah, yeah. And you just gone, oh yeah, Mother Mary. I was like, yeah, that's quite yeah. scary because it was Mother Mary. Yeah, she and was just honestly, like where them hand. is it caught? It's hanging up behind you there in the yeah. corner she yeah. was like just next to the behind, next to the bed but behind your left shoulder she was oh, there so she cool. just sort of like appeared and then sort of disappeared I like, i'll yeah. have to let him know and then the, yeah because the conversation kept going elsewhere i'm like how do i bring this back <laughs> <laughs> i'm so glad i'm so glad you mentioned that because um when i'll go back to it now because we brought mother mary up um when i was going through all that trouble I kept seeing ladybirds. So I had ladybird in this room, a ladybird. Mm. I have like a little arrow thing at work. You know, obviously I'm a bridge operator for people who don't know. And when the bridge comes back to neutral to standpoint, it's like a little arrow that tells me that it's back to normal. Mm. I had a ladybird on that. I had two ladybirds in my car. Mm. So I was like, right, these ladybirds are following me. What's <laughs> going on? And I Googled it, honestly. And it said, um, ladybirds are a sign of Mother Mary's with you and helping ah, you and guiding right, you. Okay. Yeah. Did they all so, have the same number dot on them or were they different dots or? Oh, you brought something totally new into it now. I didn't know. I, I don't know ah, that. But right. 
you know, sometimes, that... sometimes if you look for dots, if they always have the same number dots, mm -hmm. look at the numeral numerological meaning for the amount of dots. If there's like oh. two dots or four dots or like whatever, that. they can all have a meaning as well. Oh, I like that. I'll be doing that next time because they're yeah. always around, especially from like March to what August. Mm. They're always around me. Yeah, um, and, and then they're not something you really see a lot of these days, are they? You know, when I was a kid, they were like all over the place. Mm 